You probably remember me from The Lilas Dive. That's in Ozona, Colorado, where I play every Saturday night. Uh, today, though, I want to talk to y'all about a new product that I invented. This is Clive's Clever Clothespin Capo. Now, I came up with this idea, and I was working with this here. Uh, this is an S.S. Stewart Badger. This is made in 1885. And I didn't want to put railroad spikes. I put railroad spikes in my other Badger. I didn't want to do it with this one. And so I was just wedging a stick underneath the fifth string, and uh, that actually worked pretty good. So, so I wanted something that would work a little better. And I was thinking about, you know, just cutting up a clothespin, but I didn't actually do that, to be honest. I got a little piece of maple that I had left over from uh, making some stuff or working on fiddles. I cut a little triangle in it, and I just started sanding. I ended up with this slotted piece that um, uh, will fit underneath the string, wedge underneath the string, and wedge on a particular fret and uh, hold like a proper capo. And um, I uh, molded it and I made a bunch of them and then I made another mold that could produce multiple copies of the thing and uh, I decided to market it on eBay. So that's what this video is about. This is shameless commercialism. I'm uh, walking these things. Okay. So now I'm going to put this in here. In this case it's on the third fret, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but this here piece, it has a little slot cut in the bottom that fits over the fret, and it has another slot cut into it here that the string goes in, and where that string goes in, there are two little spots, two little settings that you can get, depending on where up and down the neck and how much height you've got here. This particular banjo has a fairly high fifth string. I've got a raised fifth string on the bridge here. Um, my, my other banjo's got a raised fifth string on the bridge and the nut, so that's fairly high too, but I've got, I've got another version of this that's lower if you need that. This is the high one. And I'm gonna show you that other one in a minute here. First, we'll clip this in. So it just slides right in there, um, clips on there, and it stays real well. And then I'm gonna put my capo here. Now, I don't know about you all, but when I sing songs, I look for a key that works. Cause, uh, well, never mind. I, I need to find one that works for me cause I can't sing in every key. And I don't necessarily sing the songs in the keys that people originally recorded them in. I find something that works in my voice. And in the case of this particular song, this is, this is what works for me, which is basically B flat. Um, so, uh, this works very well.
I to mention uh, that the design of this thing, the idea, is a fixed item, no moving parts, and uh, it sort of clips on, but by nature, anything that's no moving parts and clips on can uh, clip off. You know, it doesn't grip. So, um, the whole idea is the design of the thing keeps the string down in its place, but it depends on wedging in there. So, if it's not tight enough wedged in there, it can pop off. Now, um, that happens in one of two ways. Either it pops off completely, or sometimes if it's in the second slot in, further in, it'll pop out into the first slot and if you keep going then it'll pop off so um, it is important that uh, the item squeeze in there enough now um, on this particular what I wanted to show you and this I kind of almost recommend that you do this sort of thing if you have a problem if it pops off on you and you have to you know it goes on the floor and you have to search for it or whatever um, then I recommend you do something like this which is kind of try to figure out what you're doing that pops it off and as I said the one thing is if it's not tight enough if it's tight enough pretty much anything you do is not going to pop it off but if it isn't so I'm going to put this on the third fret here um, on this banjer I happen to know that this one's kind of small they vary a little bit this one's kind of small and I already know that I can pop it off. Now, that's why I put it on there because I'm going to try to. I don't know for sure if it's going to work. Um, but this is what I... Usually, if it's too loose and it does pop off, it's usually because I'm pushing down on the string. It's like you're pushing it, let go, and it pops off. So, I'm going to actually try to do that. It didn't work. There you go. See, I can make it pop off. Now... That being said, I'm going to put that same one back on, which actually is too, too short in this spot. But it works, and I can play. And I could do that all day now. But you could do, you could probably too, but then one of these times it might pop off. So that's why I say if you got one and you know that it's a little loose, maybe you get up, you know, getting up here. Most banders are not going to be as loose as this one. I know it because this one's fairly loose. But if you do get up high or whatever and you're getting kind of loose, you can still do it and it'll work as long as it'll make the, the tone. But um, you, it might be better if you. Uh, use the bigger one. As a matter of fact, it would be better if you use the bigger one. You can get by, but that would be the thing to do. So, um, depending on how many banjos you have and what they're like, you might um, need a couple. You need one of each of these sizes. Um, I use one of each size. Um, so, uh, um, now, in that case, I would go back in here and I put this one, the larger one, on that same fret, on the third fret, and uh, hook it in there. And I'm just putting it on the first setting, the low setting. And See, you can't, you can't make it come off. So it's tight enough, it won't come off. It's sort of hook shaped. Um, that's all I want to say. If you find that that's a little bit of a problem, I mean, you can return the item, but most of the time, if that happens, it's just a, it's an isolated incident that you can deal with. It can be a pain in the neck if it falls on the floor and you can't find it and you get annoyed. But um, uh, that's, uh, I think you will find that that's a small problem. See, I'm trying as hard as I can to make that fall off. And as I said, even if I go on to the um, small one, the smaller one, and I put it on there in a position that, as I said, I already know is uh, too small. Now, I can just pop it because I figured out how to do it and I can get it off. But if I'm just playing...
deliberately popping it off. So I, I, I'm just re the reason I'm doing this little bit of a demonstration is because you can do that I, unless I put a, something in there that clamps down, it'll be able to be popped off. So um, uh, that's I mean the beauty of the thing is that it doesn't come off unless you really work at it uh, because of the way these things are shaped, tracks are shaped. But um, uh, you know it can't make it perfect. Uh, well, I guess it's possible, but I haven't made it perfect yet. Um, this this thing works very good. I can play all day long without popping the thing off, um, and sometimes I do. But uh, I just wanted to show you that. That's all. Just a little quickie about that. So um, that's it. I'm gonna offer them uh, a small one, just a small one, which if you've got a bluegrass style banjo, it's probably going to be plenty. Um, you can buy the small one and the large one together and I'm going to give you a little discount for that and uh, that would definitely be plenty. And if you've got a banjo that has a nylon strings or any kind of banjo that has a higher action you'll want the larger one. It's not a whole lot of difference, but it makes a big difference. It, it, you want that, you need that wedging in to make it work. That's the whole idea of how it works. Um, and at the same time, you don't want just the big one because you don't want to lift the string way up either. It's going to start, you know, aging. You could do that, but you'll age your strings quicker probably and, you know, might stress stuff over the long run. You can do it. You can just, you could just buy a big one if you've got two kinds of uh, fiddles. And I mean, uh, Banjos are just uh, to you know, make it just shove it in. You can do that. Um, I wouldn't. I don't think it would hurt that much. But um, I made the small size so people wouldn't have to do that. Uh, okay. Well, um, that's uh, that's my two cents worth on this particular issue. Well, I hope that uh, kind of gives you a pretty good idea. Um, so, as I said, we got two sizes. Now I designed this thing originally because uh, I wanted something to use on my SS Stewart banjo because I didn't want to uh, alter the neck. Now, uh, and then I came up with a smaller one, mostly just so I'd have a smaller one. My uh, other banjo that I play on at any regular basis is, uh, uh, it actually already has spikes in the neck. Um, but it only has three of them, so lately when I play in between, I've been using this, and it actually <laughs> turns out that's almost all the time. So, uh, they actually seem to work real good to me. Um, these are handmade. I made the wooden one in my studio, and I molded it, and then I took one of those castings, and I made the smaller one out of that, and then I made another mold that had the two sizes, and then out of that, I made a whole bunch of them out of wax. And then with those, I made a mold that makes a bunch of them. So now i got a bunch of these, but it's still a hand process, and they get hand finished and cut and so forth and so on. So they're, um, they're pretty much handmade. Um, they work really good. This material, which is uh, from a company called Smooth On, this material is called Task 3. It's a urethane-based casting resin. And it's very strong, uh, very strong. It's stronger than the wooden one. Um, and uh, so I think they're a cool little item. So I'm offering them for sale here. And I uh, hope you all like it. And um, I hope you enjoyed my nutty video. Um, bye-bye. While I got you, I wanted to mention here that I'm making a third size of these. I'm doing this because on my SS Stewart banjo, I put another a new uh, bridge, and uh, the action got so high that from the third fret up, my large size is kind of loose, and it works, but it doesn't sound quite right. So I'm going to make a larger size. I don't want to wait until it's ready to do this listing because I'm really up against it so far as Christmas is concerned here, and this is. Uh, supposed to be a money-making venture at Christmas time if possible. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do this listing. And if you want the higher one, you think you might need the higher one. What that is, is a SS Stewart Universal Favorite. And it's set up, I think, the way it was originally produced, which was with a half-inch bridge. And with that, that second size is a little, I mean, it works fine up till the third fret, but then it's not quite, I mean, I'm saying the uh, um, eighth fret. Uh, from, from the eighth, the ninth, and the tenth fret, it's, uh, it isn't right. It's, it's too, I mean, it's not tight enough. And as I said earlier on, it has to be tight. So I'm making a third one for that. These two should work for just about anything else. I think that's quite high for what they generally are. But I am making that third size. I will list it, I hope, in a week, but it could be two weeks. And um, it will join this listing. And I'm going to have some other listings coming up here. So uh, I'd like to wish you all a wonderful solstice season. I don't know exactly how you all celebrate it, but uh, it's a wonderful time of the year, and I hope we will be generous to each other. And, you know, have fun giving gifts, but be generous to each other in general right now because these are fragile times, I think. Um, and uh, I don't want to mix too much <laughs> uh, other stuff with it. This is business, you know. It's kind of funny to mix them. So uh, I just want to say goodbye. Take care.